Hey, JP here. I want to give you an update about what is happening with our latest airship, the Ellipse. First, we'll go over what the heck this airship is all about and why we're building it in the first place. Then we'll do a breakdown of the vehicle, just some nuts and bolts of the airship. That way, what I describe will make some sense. Then I'll show you where we're at and some clips showing us working on and inside of the vehicle. At the end, you'll get a sneak peek at what's going to be a real game changer for us, the Ellipse 2. We call it the Ellipse because it's our first airship with an elliptical cross-section. All nine of the V airships we have built so far have had a circular cross-section. This greatly simplified the construction and at the slow speeds that they operate at, the drag wasn't too bad. Just look at the nose of the giant Graf Zeppelin. However, it is a very poor airfoil. The ellipse, you guessed it, is all about the elliptical cross-section. In fact, figuring out how to create an elliptical cross-section, or airfoil, is the entire purpose of this vehicle. The elliptical cross-section has lower drag and paves the way for more advanced airfoil cross-sections in the future. The Stage 1 airships, those are the airships that will go from the ground to the dark sky station at 140,000 feet, will use an elliptical cross-section. When we start really pushing our airships in the thin atmosphere of 300,000 feet to orbital velocity, we'll need a different cross-section altogether. This is the cross-section of airfoil that we're looking at. We'll be testing this out in our Mach glider program and also in our hypersonic wind tunnel. However, before we get there, our thinking is that we need to get the simple elliptical shape worked out before we tackle this one. This is a 3D printed model of the ellipse. The real ellipse is bigger, but not by much. Sometimes we build big airships. This is the Ascender 175. It was a little bigger than a 747. Sometimes medium airships. This is the Ascender 9 in the hangar, at launch, and high in the sky. Sometimes we build little airships. Well, bigger than this. This is a sender 0.1 and the 18 foot Ascender 18. The Ellipse airship is a little one, just over 30 feet long. One thing we've learned is not to make your test hardware any bigger than it needs to be. That keeps cost down and development time down. The ellipse is sized for one thing only, testing the new airbeam inner structure. All of the airships we've built so far have used carbon trusses for its structure. Now don't get me wrong, carbon structures are great. Here is a carbon truss we built for the Ascender 175 airship. It's a hundred feet long and weighs just under 20 pounds. But that just isn't good enough. We need it to be even lighter. And more importantly, we need to decrease the part count. Part count is an often overlooked factor. In a 100-foot carbon truss, there are over a 1,000 parts. Nuts, bolts, fasteners, rods, all of them needing proper mounting, torquing, inventory control, serial numbers, and suppliers. You can see how, if you are building a mile-long airship, this can get pretty crazy. A hundred feet of air beam structure only has two parts, the inner cell and the outer shell. Air beams also scale well. Larger air beams are stronger and more rigid. Can air beams be used in our V airships? Well, the ellipse is a tool for figuring that out. The Ellipse is a development vehicle, an X-plane 
rather than an operational aircraft. It is the latest in a series of airships we've built as part of the Airship to Orbit program. This is our endgame vehicle, the Ascender 6000 Airship. Air beams work great on large structures. However, they don't scale down well. Air beams are actually heavier than trusses on the small size of the ellipse. That, with the loss of volume from moving from circular to an elliptical cross-section, means the ellipse is not destined for high altitude, or even much payload. The ellipse will only fly to 200 feet, and it won't be a free flight vehicle. We are going to launch it, and it will fly up to the top of a tether line, and then we'll pull it back down and launch it again. The idea is to shake it out, find, and fix all the problems we can with the structure. We're not just going to test it to destruction. We're going to test it to destruction, rebuild it, and destroy it again and again and again. In fact, we've already broken it once on the ground testing, and we actually learned quite a bit from that. Just like warm clothes in the winter, the ellipse is best thought of in layers. The ellipse consists of an outer envelope that's made of two ounce ripstop silicon coated nylon. Most of the fabric for the ellipse has come from earlier airships that we salvaged or pulled huge sections out of. So it looks a little worn and tattered. It's more of a quilt than an airship. This is an overhead sketch of the ellipse. It's an outline of the outer envelope. Each wing is four feet tall and six feet wide. The length is 30 feet along the wings. Inside is the air beam structure. Shown here is the outer envelope of the air beam that is sewn of the same material as the outer envelope. It's made up of seven segments that are Velcroed together, forming one tube. It runs along the entire leading and trailing edge of the wings. The air beams are held onto the walls with loops that are sewn in to the outer envelope. Inside the air beam outer shell is a polyethylene tube. This tube is actually larger in diameter than the outer shell. This prevents the inner cell from bearing any of the pressure load. To keep it simple and to cut down on plumbing, the ellipse's inner cell is one continuous tube. On larger airships, the air beam inner cell will be separated into multiple sections. Between the air beams are foam spacers. The spacers force the air beams outward, giving the wings their elliptical cross-section. The air beams under pressure are incredibly rigid. It only takes a few spacers to keep the leading and trailing edges of the wing in position. This is a cross-section view of the wing. In the center is the spacer that's separating the leading and trailing edge air beams. Okay, back to the top view. Completely filling the rest of the volume will be the helium lifting cells. There is one helium lifting cell on the left and one on the right. Since there is only one helium cell in each wing, we can't control the pitch of the airship by pumping helium back and forth. So the trim will be accomplished by what we call externally static trim. This basically means we're going to be putting bean bags in pockets that are sewn on the outside of the outer envelope to balance it. And that will be fixed and static for each test flight. Okay, back to the outside. The structure is further stiffened by two carbon fiber poles. One across the arm and the second running from the trailing edge of the nose back to the center of the cross pole. Now these poles are one and a quarter inch diameter and they come from the tandem airship program. We're going to fit the ellipse with a small rocket motor. This motor will only push the ellipse just a very small bit. Its purpose is to get the rocket engine on the checklist and to get the team some training and experience with a rocket engine in the airship launch environment. But wait, we've been talking about air beams, but what the heck are they? 
An air beam is an inflated structure. They get the strength from the air pressure inside. They're made out of an outer fabric shell and an inner poly cell. Unlike a balloon or a raft, the outer shell is limited in its stretch. Also, it doesn't take much pressure. We can wring a hammer off our air beams at just 5 psi. It's amazing how much strength they have for such little weight. They've been used in bridges, tents, and even buildings. We've been developing and testing air beams for several years in the shop. We've tested over 30 different designs. Now it's time to test them in the air. That, of course, is where the ellipse comes in. Now, just a note, sadly, we are not a part of the Space Billionaires Club. So if you want to support the program and help keep us flying, head over to our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. The ellipse is getting close to completion. We've completed the three big milestones. The outer envelope is complete. We've finished sewing the outer shell of the air beam structure, and we've made the air beam inner cells, and we've even conducted the integration testing, pulling all of these elements together. Let's take a look. This is the outer envelope. The inflation is sped up a bit. It's 30 feet long, and the arms will be six feet wide when formed into an ellipse. It is made out of two ounce silicon-coated ripstop nylon. Every yard of it comes from one of our earlier airships, so it's a bit of a patchwork. The outer envelope only holds air. There will be inner polycells that hold the helium. For just a tube, the air beam was a complicated bit of sewing. Over a hundred feet of polytubing went inside the outer shell. On bigger airships, the air beam will be multiple segments. For the ellipse, we made it all one piece to keep it simple, light, only one set of plumbing. The drawback is that it needed to be threaded in a single line throughout the airship. Here's the gang threading the air beam through the mounting loops inside the ellipse. The air beam here is only inflated to half pressure. At full pressure, the air beam will expand and stretch slightly larger than the red loops holding them in place. The inflation fan at the end was continually pushing the air beam out of position. For flight, we will be filling the airship through the side ports like we do with the larger vehicles. We're now testing the spacers, pushing out the air beams, creating the elliptical cross section. Next, we're going to take the helium release vents from the Ascender 36, modify them, and install them on the ellipse. Then we need to make the mounts for the carbon crossbeam, then mount the cameras and the satellite tracking system. Even though it's going to be on a tether, I don't like to put anything in the sky without a tracking system. After that, we're going to do a full parking lot assembly and run through of the checklist. This usually takes a couple of times to work out all the kinks. Then we'll take it all apart and then take it up to Area 42 and reassemble it for the flight. We're going to launch it nose up, tail up, sideways, off balance. The poor little ellipse is going to get a complete shakedown. We're going to push the new structure and find out what works and where the weak points are. The balloon arena at our launch site was specifically designed for a 50-foot ascender, so the smaller ellipse will fit in there just fine. The wind fence and two containers are lined for maximum protection against the morning prevailing winds. After the test flights, the ellipse's job is not over. We will be using it as a ground-based test bed for systems. The first of the new systems to be tested will be the internal helium management system. On the Ascender 36 and the Ascender 9, the helium transfer tubes, pumps, and valves were all on the outside of the vehicle. Now we're going to mount them on the inside, and we'll test that out on the ellipse. 
the ellipse will also get the new pneumatic valves we've been testing on our away missions. Next, the ellipse will be fitted with an active drag reduction system. This will be the first time we take this system out of the lab and put it into the field. The ellipse will also be the guinea pig for experimenting with attaching flexible solar panels to the fabric. The latest cold storm has hit California, so I'm breaking continuity and putting my sweater back on. Okay, what is next for the ellipse? You know, the Airship to Orbit program is a big, complex undertaking. The development programs like engines, structures, drag reduction, they all impact each other. You may start out with a well-defined plan, but it takes 30 development programs all intertwined with each other, each with a life of their own. And things don't always come out how you expect them to. One of the big development programs is the engines. The engine program is moving faster than expected. To take advantage of this, we're going to move more aggressively and make the next airship an engine platform. This will be the merger of our Mach Glider program, the Ascender 48 vehicle, and the Ellipse to create the Ellipse 2. The Ellipse 2 will be a much bigger vehicle at 50 feet long and will be driven by one of our Symphony plasma engines. The Ellipse 2 will only be buoyant to 70,000 feet. To carry it higher for testing, we're going to carry it by balloon or by the tandem vehicle. The purpose of the Ellipse 2 is to demonstrate climb with the plasma engine. When will all this happen? We are developing this as we go. That's one of the reasons we don't focus much on flight dates. The other reason we don't forecast is that everybody, and I mean everybody from NASA to SpaceX to us, always gets it wrong. I argue that not playing the forecast game helps you deliver sooner by stripping away one more distraction. Best not even to play in that sandbox. What we do know, the next step, the next test, the next flight in front of us. Well, that's where we are with the Ellipse Airship. Watch our blog and our Twitter feed for the latest happenings with the vehicle. We have three engine firings and a submarine life support system test ahead of it on the schedule, but I am really itching to see the ellipse in the air. If you like what you see and want to give us some support, head over to our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Thank you for watching.